What is up? I am out doing some adjustments on the Frankenstein hybrid water heater heat pump, which cools the mechanical room slash Frankenstein laboratory. So now that it's been summertime, you know, it's, of course, you know, having a little harder time <laughs> with all the heat. I've done a couple little modifications to it. I did this at the beginning of summer, and what I did was, uh, this is a, this coil here is the uh, outdoor coil for uh, winter time. It's just a evap coil, strictly with capillary tube uh, meter device. And I have some isolation valves. So that one shut off during the summer, and instead it's using the indoor high wall to absorb heat and air condition that space for the heat pump to add heat to my water exchanger, heat exchanger to the water tank. And when I kind of redid it this spring, I kind of just threw this extra little piece of coil. So after the uh, hot gas goes through the uh, heat exchanger, then it makes this pass through this small coil right here, and then goes back to the each distributor for whichever meter device you're using, outdoor coil, indoor coil for the summer. The reason I had to keep this kind of small is because I've noticed with a little tiny compressor like this, this is not even a one ton compressor, it's like three quarter ton or something, but I noticed like when I tried to tie it into this last year, it air conditioned the snot out of that room, but it didn't. It wasn't efficient at putting the heat into the water heater. So I had to kind of keep the volume uh, limited for it to be efficient at heating the water. And it, after I put this back in here, it was back to efficiently heating the water, just like it was before when this was just a, strictly an outdoor coil and heat exchanger for the water heater heat pump. So later that I thought, you know, why not just add <laughs> the option of cooling that room during the summer instead of pulling the heat from the outside it pulls it from that room so that's what i've been doing it's just this is that when that storage tank the water heater gets up to uh 139 degrees like it did yesterday uh just by the thermostat the eco be here trying to keep the frankenstein laboratory down to uh 88 which is what i've been setting it when i'm not in there occupied it was it was still getting the tank it was overheating the tank because people weren't using enough showers or whatever so i know i could probably heat the water even more than that probably get it up to 150 i'm sure before it even comes close to opening the safety relief but it's just too much pressure and load on this rotary compressor it's already been getting pissed off so i'm experimenting with adding some misters right here and uh I'm kind of short on the hose because uh well I don't have all my parts. Amazon was supposed to give me all the parts yesterday, and I got one of the one of the parts was wrong. Sent me a woman's belt <laughs> instead of water filter. Totally two different items. So right now I just have it hooked up with what I got just to kind of test. So we got our pressures, and they've been kind of going up and down. And it was running like uh, 450 to 460 or so, which isn't wasn't horrible, but up there, you know. Uh, or was it even higher than that? No, I'm sorry. It was, I think it might have been over 500. We'll see. We'll review later when I save this and put it on the screen. It was up there. So it definitely has dropped pressure. You know, having the emissions on this little coil here. So I would say that's a success. And then right now, what I've got going on is my superheat's actually gone up. I'm like, what the hell? How is that? And the room has gone down from 88 to 82 while I've been out here running this thing. So, in like, how long has this thing been recording for? 40 minutes. I turned this on probably a few minutes after uh, the unit started cooling the room, heating the water. The water was 125, and now at last I looked, it was 131 already in the tank. I'm sure it's like 132 or so. We'll run in there a second. And we got glare on the screen, huh? So, it's definitely doing a good job. Look at that. Almost, that's way down there even though my water heater's going up. But what I'm noticing is the superheat's kind of higher, and I think I actually had the refrigerant kind of a little low to keep the pressures okay, and now it's not, you know, it's actually got a little higher superheat. I don't know, it's weird. Let me go inside and see what the uh, storage tank is up to, and the room is down to 81. Okay, we're inside my garage. I'm just gonna uh, speak as if somebody's never seen my series of videos on this, but this is the garage. You can see I'm working on experiments in here and stuff. Um, I finally put this up this summer. Why did this make a difference? I put my thermal probe on this black here, and it would be like this metal in the morning when the sun was on there. It would be like 130s, <laughs> and it would be like a huge drop of foil back foam there. So this is a, a room I closed off that's around my mechanical equipment in here 
turn the light on. There's my Eco Bee. I also use this room. I was using it, but it's been too hot. So yeah, my uh, storage tank. See, I have it set for 126, but it's 131. So it's heating past the set point on that. And there's my controller homemade up there, which is gonna definitely get fixed up <laughs> eventually. But that's working flawlessly. All my programmed controller is working perfect. It stages my circulator pump. Um, and everything so 132 this just changed to you right before i so got up to 132 room's down to 81 there's the high wall so it's not quite a 20 degree split actually this temperature almost has gone up a little bit as i've dropped the head pressure <laughs> go figure that so i'm gonna go probably set that down my batteries like it's 20 kilowatt hour whatever that is Man, they're up to 57 volts, so it's probably not hardly charging them as much anymore. Let's see what, oh yeah, my solar voltage is up to 300. It's dropped the charging down to pretty much two kilowatts into it. It was due to the last couple days I came in here when the air wasn't running. Um, it was like three and a half, like 3,500 watts I was getting of charge rate into those batteries for my off-grid solar panels. Yeah, but we're using a thousand watts. 900 something if like the lights use 100 watts isn't it funny see that that is my water pump the compressor and the outdoor fan running like 850 to 900 watts this led light runs 100 watts so that whole system heating my water is only like eight of these freaking lights that's it that's all the power it's using to heat my water and it heats it well yeah so that's the deal. I am gonna clean up that electronics, I think, a little bit. I think I kinda already showed you guys. I kinda designed my own little controller, which I could be using for, I'm gonna use for that outdoor unit, and I'm gonna probably, re, I could just reprogram it and also use it for this indoor unit because it has relays. I could stage on the compressor, stage on the pump, maybe two speeds for the pump. I should probably add another triac board. I'm thinking of making my own little speed controller for this. But for low, I'm just using like a light dimmer <laughs> triac circuit. So when the relay, first relay comes on, it just goes to that to run this really slow. And then once the liquid line temperature gets above a certain point to, to keep the head pressure right and make it heat the tank, good heat rise, right? It's basically adjusted for heat rise. Once it hits like 110 on liquid line, then it goes to high speed and just cranks this thing up full blast. And this time of year, it just kind of stays there. It says pump high speed. <laughs> Oh, 71 degrees. That's my, I forgot I moved that probe over on the suction line right there, 71. We'll go see how accurate that is in 72, 71, 118 liquid line. Yeah, the liquid line's way above the high speed set point because it's fucking hot out there. I wonder what that would have said earlier before I put the misters on. So now that we know our, the tank is at 132, the room's at 81, I got like 63 or something. Kind of crappy. Got like 18 degrees split right now. Let's go. I'm going to add a couple shots of refrigerant and go see what it does got the old bastard goodman running got the lennox running and when you can hear that compressor sound like that that's actually when that's on low speed 40 hertz three phase compressor bfd at 40 hertz so 393 wow it might have cooled off a little bit out here outdoor temperature 104 We're measuring right here in the shade and this, this 114 is the temperature over here, just leaving the fan. And before I added the misters, I was in the 120s. So it dropped like eight degrees by adding that misters. So super heat, yeah, it is pretty high. 72, wow. So my thermistor is right here. This, 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 this guy right here is going to my homemade electronics inside and it's reading within a degree of that Testo. So I can, I forgot I moved that there, did that. I can actually look at the cold temperature right there. So I'm gonna keep, I already added a couple ounces, but what I'm doing is just kind of got that choked off. I'm kind of just opening this line. And I'm just gonna crack this valve open a little bit until I see suction bump up. A little bit, Oop, there we go. Just let it squeak in there a little bit. I'm just doing like an ounce at a time through that hose. Just gonna see if I can get that uh, coil temperature better. And what this is, uh, I figure what I calculate, it's like for one ton, I think I actually have it a little less than that. These are just two capillaries in parallel. I've already had the system working great before it got hot out. So I've been, I actually like capillary tubes again. 
I actually, uh, I'm preferring them over expansion valves on certain things just because there's, they work. They actually modulate a little bit. Like as if this gets extra hot, it'll just uh, a little bit of gas and, uh, add it to the liquid, just slows them down so it doesn't overfeed. This, so this is my, like I said, the Eco B. Let's see, how do I go back? 77, 77. You see my inside one says, uh, this one's a two stage. It's showing, it's showing that it's on one stage. So, because I have it set at 76, so we're room is a space of 77. It's just kind of trapped in between that, you know, where you get that up and down uh, as it switches from first to second stage. Cools down at one degree, goes down to first stage. It warms up a degree, goes to second stage. 392, man, we're still running great on the high pressure. Being that my water tank is at 131, 132, right? Might even be warmer now. And then it's passing through the secondary coil, basically. Think of that as a secondary heat exchanger after the, the, the one for the water, circulating the water tank. So, still got, but my 112, 37 EVAP, 72 coming out of the EVAP. So, it's got a lot of superheat. So, we're going to, I'm going to keep adding an ounce here or there. Uh, try to get this back to work. So anyway, I'm going to do that off camera for a few minutes and we'll see kind of if I could get that super heat down and maybe improve that split temperature in there a little bit. It's only been like two or three minutes, but it's kind of dropped the super heat down from like 30 something to 21 just by giving like a couple shots in there. My head pressure is now 430, which is expected for it to shoot up a little bit. But that's actually <laughs> very reasonable. It's actually still dropping just a pinch. 129 now. Uh, air leaving that coil is still about 114-ish. 104 outside right here. Only 13.8% relative humidity out here. This is supposed to be just a little short, quick video. And I'm just rambling on way too much. But basically the whole theme is I'm just fine-tuning the Frankenstein you know, creation, which this creation actually is one of my better ones. Um, it might seem stupid, but the thing is, um, all of this runs off those solar panels in my backyard. I got the on-grid ones that's on the roof, but I have solar panels in the backyard that I bought used and then I installed that charger inverter with the batteries. And this time of year, it hasn't touched utility power at all. In the winter, it would run the batteries down when you needed to heat the water a lot more and you had shorter days. It would run the batteries down and use utility power just a little bit at night or early in the morning. But as soon as the uh, sun came up it would, enough, it would just heat the water right off the sun and then it would have enough to start charging the batteries a little bit. So it would use just a little bit of utility power in the winter. And then by the time it gets warmer like it is now, I'm like topping off the batteries, you know, and it's not heating the water enough that uh, I'm not even utilizing the solar energy available. So this idea of putting the misters on here is that I should be able to set my temperature down in that space. Well, my phone just stopped recording on me, so I don't know where that cut out. Yeah, to empty some videos into the trash, and it happens. So I've been rambling too much. If I put just another little quick shot in there. Superheat's a little bit below 20. We're probably about there. So to end the video, Let's go see what the uh, temperature of the water tank and the temperature coming out of that high wall is. Of course, each time I open this door, I'm adding heat to the room. Oh, it just dropped to 80 from the time we saw that screen out there. Yeah, it's like low, low 60s now. So, probably a little bit better. That's what I have. Anyway, the video is going to be too long. It's supposed to be a little short video, but it's cooling. The room's dropping. Went from 88 to 80 in a lot less than an hour. And I just eventually maybe I'll come work on it because I'm going to forget what I was working on, man. I had a little homemade inverter thing I was messing with. It's kind of, eh. And then uh, this is my AC thing takes 24 volts AC you know inputs I have all marked there high pressure low pressure Y2O Y1 I can just remap 
some of that stuff if I need to for other projects, but this is made intended for that little skinny heat pump out there. So I've been in here working on some electronics, letting this unit try to maintain this room, 78 degrees. It was blowing out nice, crisp 60 degree air, but this room <laughs> has quite a bit of heat, I guess, so it wasn't dropping much below that. And it did just satisfy, but look how warm the water heater is. 143 and the set point in here is 126. But uh, I think it can handle that. So that's a pretty good test. It ran for over a solid hour while I was in here. And that's as hot as the tank got. And I think now, uh, when I'm not in here, if I said, I'm probably going to set it for like a 78 during the day. Maybe even a little cooler just to kind of maintain the room. And then uh, at night, probably like 80-ish or something like that. Anyway, batteries are good and charged. And then this will probably cycle on in a couple minutes. <laughs> as much heat load as there could be out here.